Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this How to Play video I'm going to take a look at the most powerful shaman deck in the Bloomsday metagame, and that is the Even Shaman. While the OTK combo of the Shadowbox Shaman may be in the headlines, it's actually Even Shaman that is the most steady performer. And it's a deck that doesn't really rely on RNG. It's a deck that is very solid in its game plan, solid in its execution, and it's very effective. In its core, Even Shaman is a board-centric mid-range deck. It is typically by far not the fastest aggro deck out there, although with certain draws it can do very much damage early on, such as if it gets a corpse stake with Wind Fury and it's able to buff that with something like a Flame Tongue Totem. It can do a lot of damage. But for the most part, it plays a relatively conservative early game, and then it really gets onto its own when it gets to play some sea giants on the board, and then it gets these fire elementals and lich king, these sort of big threats on the board to really close out the game. This particular build is one that Atom used to reach number one legend, so it has been proven to be pretty effective. Although that number one legend as a qualification might be somewhat confusing as well, because number one legend is reached in a specific metagame at a specific time. But overall, also the overall statistics of this deck show that this is one of the most solid even shaman builds, and even shaman is the most solid shaman archetype. As a genuine mid-range deck, the, your game plan varies depending on your opponent. If you're facing a very aggressive aggro deck, you are the control deck and you play the control role. You try to defend yourself and then ultimately swing the game. If you're playing something slower or something like a combo deck, then you are the aggressor and you need to try to figure out how do I deal damage as fast as possible in order to close out the game. This is somewhat reflected in the mulligan decisions. While the general early game, Double Falfa, Erden Might, Flemdang Totem, Nimbus, Mark's Bakil, Primal Fin Totem, forms a solid basis for your early mulligan. You don't want to keep the scale height, by the way, because scale height is the minion that provides lifesteal for your corpse takers. But while these provide a solid early game, there's also a corpse taker that you want to keep in almost any matchup, and then if you think that you're going to be the aggressor, then you want to keep some sea giants so that you can try to get tokens on the board and the sea giant early in order to really take on that aggressor role. Whereas if you think that you will be defending against something like a paladin, then you want to mulligan for mossy horror in order to get a board wipe in the mid the game and start building from there. And finally, against warrior you need a bit of a different game plan, because just the cards in your deck, warrior can probably remove them all. So against Warrior, you're actually looking for Hagata, because getting that Hagata value means that you will be able to outvalue the Warrior by having more threats than they have answers for. With this deck, the early turns are usually the crucial ones. You have the gain hero power, so your totems only cost one, so on turn one you're going to totem up. Except, if you're on the coin, then sometimes you need to coin a 2-drop. Like say you're playing against the Zoo, if the Zoo has a very strong opener, if you just tow them up, they value trade the totem and they keep coming, so you may be forced to get a 2-drop on the board immediately. Also, lining up your buffs is crucial, because if you can get a totem up or some minions up, then you need to get them Darwolf Alphard or Flame Tongue Totem, in some cases buffed with an Earth and Might. So positioning is crucial, especially in the early game. You want to get those tokens side by side and big minions off to the side, so that you can form up a chain where you can use Darwolf Alpha or Flame Tongue Totem with successive token minions in order to clear up a board. It doesn't have a whole lot of special things, it just performs solidly, so if you want to learn how to play the basics of Hearthstone, then Even Shaman is a good deck for that. It teaches you the basics of tempo, basics of taking the control role or the beatdown role, teaches you about minion positioning, and just playing a good, solid, basic game. On the other hand, if you're looking for something a bit more special, then this deck doesn't really do special things. Hagata is the main thing that causes changes in the game plan, whether you consider that a good thing or not. Anyway, as always, I've prepared some gameplay material of this deck for you, so 
let's go take a look at it in action. That simply isn't something you do. But it's so boring because control decks can't live. Yeah, combo. They they made combo the best thing. Is control warlock any good? Yeah, control warlock is fine. Because it's the only control deck that can beat combo. Because of demonic project. But you can only play so much control warlock. I've already made a video of control warlock in the current meta. Kalin, can I play control priest with best with any success? Yeah, if you can dodge through it, you can. You're fine against two. You're even fine against hunter. There's got to be something like a. No, I think it's still Merc's Spock heal. Merc's Spock heal gives me a chance that I will have two minions on the board next turn for a Direwolf Alpha. Nothing else really gave me a good chance of, at that. Because this now requires the Blessing of Might. But I read that he has Blessing of Might in hand when he played this Diamond here. That was the read. That there will be a Blessing of Might. So at least there was no Blessing of Might. There's quite a lot of other stuff. Don't totem, please. Ah, this is the worst one. Why did it have to be this one? Next turn he can't activate the recruits yet. So I think right now I have to kill this one. And I have to earthen my totem to kill this one. So everything that he has left has one health. Now if he has the weapon... If he has the weapon that gives divine shield, he's in such a great spot. But uh, he only has four cards. What's the probability that he has the weapon that gives divine shield? Okay, so far so good. Couple of options here. Like a Serenite Chain Gang is good because next turn he can't yet play the good buffs. So we kill the two health minion. We kill a recruit. We play the chain gang. If he had the weapon that would give divine shield, he would have played it. If he has the weapon that gives attack, well, with the chain gang, I'm fine with that. Here comes the blessing. So he had the blessing, but what? I don't know. Speak your peace. I don't know why he didn't use it. Next turn he can play Fungal Mancer. I can respond to a Fungal Mancer with a Hex. I still don't want to leave him with two targets. Which means that I need to go with the Phoenix, right? Ph yeah, Phoenix over Eel. Eel would give me a wider board, but there might be better uses for the Alpha later. I can roll the Totem first and see what I get. The Alpha is going to get value traded. If I want to hex something anyway next turn, then it's better to play the Phoenix now. So I can do hex eel. Now this is better. Well, now there won't be a fungal man to play. This one is just going to go to town a little bit. So he has a flame elemental in hand. A card he has since the start, but one that he didn't keep. And one fresh card. Glory to the for duty. It is looking good. So let me see. I could do like Earth and Might, Eel, Direwolf. That way I could trade both of these and kill one of the recruits. Oh, then might here. Dire wolf. Trade, trade. Eel. 
Put them right there and die a wolf. But I can trade, trade. And then I can... Not on that side. I want this on this side. I can heal one of those. I like this. Also everything at 2 health or above, so Sylvan Recruit by itself does nothing. I don't basically find things. There's tarims and all sorts of nasty things. This would be a good preparation for a tarim play. <coughs> My mossy horror turn yet. Yeah, healing totem is nice. I trade here, obviously. Do I trade away all the recruits? He gets 7 mana so he can hero power into... ...level up, if that card is a level up. So yeah, I'm trading away all the recruits. And I'm playing the Corpse Taker here. That could be a Vine Cleaver to hit. Vine Cleaver. You can get some things done here. There's some potential for level up play. Next turn he would have enough mana to play Lost in Jungle, Hero Power and level up. And there's potential for Fungal Mansa play. Let's trade a bit on this board. But no need to kill off this one yet. We can just hit there. And do Fire Bloom Phoenix on that one. And then I can take a value trade on this one. So we have a Pugin and go face with the rest. Okay. Well, this game at least looks like it's won. Even if that's a Tarim, well, well... Everything just gets bigger if it's Tarim. But, like, if he top decks Lost in the Jungle and level up... It was Tarim, but the best possible card. How appropriate. So if I hex the Tarim, I can push... 6, 10... Plus 10, which is lethal. Beautiful. Let's hex it. Kill it off. And then we just hit face. Much face hitting. Many face hittings. Tempo mage, I guess. I mean, it has to be a tempo mage. I mean, I have some healing. I have a scale hide. I have some corpse takers. But they're typically not enough. I find that they just die to some random damage. But luckily totems can help with that random damage a little bit. He kept two cards. So I'm expecting a mana burn. Always expect a mana burn. Okay, we're dealing two damage to the mana burn. Let's see if we can kill it. Too bad I don't have any other buffs or anything, so he can just like frostbolt this one and go on with the mana burn. Or he could even play Sorcerer's Apprentice, go and frostbolt if he has really perfect hand. Now he needs to actually think if he trades, because if he trades, he plays around Flame Bank Totem and Die Wolf Alpha. So yeah, I, I think trading there was nice for him. Let's make more stuff on the board. But now he could play like Cinderstorm or Shooting Star. Shooting Star would be sweet. Marquee missiles can also work. Perfect. 100% perfect Arcane missiles. Okay, then we have reached the point where I need to kill off that mana burn. He still had a coin in hand too, so lots of scary stuff. Obviously this leaves him with some spell damage. 
which I'm not a huge fan of, but sometimes. Okay, is that Arkham is us going to hit three on the Phoenix? Nope. Well, that was some consolation at least. So it's either counter spell or it's runes. I probably have to risk it. Well, not that I have a taunt minion here. That would mean that I would be in a slightly better position to try to hex this. Let's try to hex it. Okay, it's runes. Which matchup is worse, Tempo or Big Spell? Big Spell. Tempo is better. I mean, this Tempo Mage is actually... It's winnable with this deck. It's winnable. I just don't like playing in that matchup, but it's winnable. Big Spell Mage is terrible. Because you don't have Death Rattles. You don't have minions that would have such high health or Divine Shields or stuff that... They would dodge all the removal of the big spell mage. Now, if I could just draw something other than an 8 drop, that would be nice. Hmm. I would clearly appreciate getting some cheaper cards because... Yeah, Fire Elemental. I think I need to put the Corpse Taker on the rune. Feels a little bit bad, but... I think I still need to do this. He probably has something that kills the corpse taker next turn. But I, I get the better use of the battle cry by killing a minion. Because he's very likely to play Cosmic Anomaly or Sorcerer's Apprentice. And I don't want those to live. That's pretty important for me. I mean, going like Anomaly Shooting Star, well, Arkham is already spent. But if he doesn't play Anomaly, there's 7 held on the board, so... It's not always removed with the Cinder Storm. Both missiles are gone. Shooting Star without the Anomaly is not that strong. And there's got to be more to it than this. Maybe not. Entity. Nice. Chill out. That's nice. That can that can hurt me. Yeah, they are running. I know that they're running Entity sometimes nowadays. Flame Strike from Glyph. Well, I didn't play around the Flame Strike. I definitely did not play around the Flame Strike. I have to sacrifice the Alak here. Alternative, play Lich King. I have to sacrifice the Alak here. That was pretty terrible. Did I have a good way to play around the... I guess I didn't. Yeah. Now this is just going downhill from here. I need to heal face with the Kalimus. I'd hope that he doesn't have a lot of good spells here. Sindostom has been spent, Hake missiles have been spent. Just maybe he doesn't have the tools. That wasn't too bad. I could even kill this now. What if he just has another? Oh, that kind of sucks. But let's do it. I can kill that. I can heal up. I can have a board again. We've seen one fireball now too. But there's still another anomaly. And I see that there's Alunet. And there's no weapon removal in this deck. So that's either... 
Explosive wounds are counter spell. I don't think any of those decks run double entity. There's no more life steal in the deck, right? Is there only one life steal minion in this list, by the way? Yeah, there is. There is only one. He still has two shooting stars. So if that is not explosive runes, and it's not explosive runes, it's counter spell. Okay. Well, that's interesting because now, okay, you have a bunch of damage there. But is it enough to deal with the Lich King? Double Apprentice, Stargazer. What will happen then? One mana in the storm. Can he play another spell? He can frostbolt the Lich King. He's going to go to fatigue soon. So what I'm really interested in here is... Can I kill him with that information? Because if I want to, I could push. But he still has the anomaly. He has a fireball. He has a pyroblast. Fireball, pyroblast. He has the double shooting star. So my board is going to die. I think I need to trade away the apprentices. He can draw cards with Luna if he likes. I think I'll try this. Let's take away the cheap spells. He has Anomaly and he has Double Shooting Star. And I couldn't... I wanted another spell from Lich King, then I could have Doom back at the board. Because this is going to be another Shooting Star. Or the first shooting star, rather. You don't usually get direct damage from Glyph. That's rare. This time he picked up direct damage from Glyph. Earth and my top deck and we win this right here. He has Fireball and Pyroblast. That's the Earthen Might. This goes into the counter spell and then I clear the board. None of these are elementals, right? That is actually an elemental. Not that it matters too much. There. He does not have the damage to kill me. Against the Warlock, which I suppose I have to assume is going to be the Zoo. I might keep the Flame Tongue Totem. Because if I can find something, or if I can't find anything, then just Totem up might give me enough tools here. We have turned our curse into Let's our see. Strength. He had one card. Obviously him going first is bad news for me. Because that effectively means that if I tow them up now, he just value trades. Which in turn means that I need to coin the Die Wolf Alpha. Because I need a minion that can challenge the Flame Imp. And yeah. It's going to be hard from here. And he also had Kill Asset. So I guess this was a loss. 
suppose this was a loss. Playing Flame Tongue Tournament doesn't do anything. The only case in which it would help would be if I would top deck the scale hide. Or if he wants me to have something here. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. And we flame them. Kill the Kelaset. And now the two one alone cannot kill the flame dung totem. So we suddenly made a bit of a return to the game, but like if he has chain gang, especially if he has Kelaset buff the chain gang. Then I guess that is too difficult to recover from. Although I can simply play my chain gang. I need to play my chain gang here. I think I need to trade with the Rata Fair Totem too. But it's still not looking good. I mean, if he has like Fungal Mancer here, that would be huge. Fungal Mansa would mean that he can value trade with both chain gangs. That's not half bad. It's not that great either though. It really isn't that great. So I can just hex away the Despicable Red Lord at least. So he didn't have Fungal so he would have always played a Fungal Mancer there if he had one. So we have a read that there is no Fungal Mancer in hand. There is a slight chance that the Flame Dunk Totem may even survive. The Flame Dunk Totem does survive. Okay. I could obviously get a Sea Giant on the board. I can't make use of the flame dunk totem. I can if I play the scale hide. Scale hide can kill this. I could play scale hide and sea giant. Scale hide can kill the Saronite chain gang. Sea giant is just going to chill. Next turn I can play Argent Commander. I still can't push through all the taunts. If I use scale hide to kill this, I gain nothing. The scale hide is going to get value traded by this Serenite chain gang. Okay. I know what I'm doing. Whether that's going to be enough, that I don't know. But I know what I'm trying here. And then I have that Hagata on 8. The problem really is that he had the Kelesat on 2. So, Mountain Giant? Really? Why do people keep putting this in their two decks now? I do not know. But I suppose I will have to hex it. This one will have to trade here, I suppose. It doesn't exactly have to, but I think it will. Merc Spark here will kill this one. Now this is vulnerable to soul fire. Unless I roll a healing totem. So I had an option to just kill a frog. And leave the Tar Creeper. But that would make my potential Hagata weaker. Why are Zudex playing Mountain Giants nowadays? What's up with that? Well, with Flame Dunk Totem I can trade away the Mountain Giant. It actually looks pretty nice right now. I can do Flame Dunk Totem here. Then I can kill both frogs. And I can trade away the Mountain Giant. Or I could push 10 to face. 16 to face. Can he recover from 16 to face? Is that a more likely path to winning? I think it is. I'm going to push 16 to face. 
How are you? Lethal. Where did you see a lethal? I needed to hit two into the taunts. And these were both buffed by the flame tongue totem before going face. So I, I could not see the lethal there. Hmm. That minion does mean that he survives. No, it doesn't. Because I can hit and I can hit and this one dies and then I can hack at her and then I can Argent Commander his face. So this is lethal. Boom. Goes this land and boom. Maybe I can get enough minions on the board to get a sea giant. Well, that Prime of Intorium definitely can help with that. Well, what kind of priest? Most priests that I've faced recently have been those old TK. Belen. Belen priests. Belen gargoyles. Radiant elementals. Okay. They typically have, have a bunch of ways to deal with small minions. Please say something in Finnish. Kyllähän minä voin sanoa jotakin suomeksikin, mikä siinä. Se on ihan okei. Okay. How about that? I think I want to kill this immediately. I'm a little bit scared of it. Voila. Preparations for a sea giant play. Now, if he plays a minion and doesn't clear, okay, like this, then I can play a sea giant. And this, at this point of the game, I think I want to. I mean, obviously, there's one shadow or death in that deck. Let's see about that one. The sea giant should go here. Yeah, this is a sea giant turn. He already has one coin. If we can get two coins. It'll be fine. I think I want to push face. There is a world in which he gets something like a Pyromancer play. And he's able to kill this and then get access to the Flame Tongue Totem. But something like a simple Spirit Lash doesn't do, he would need Spirit Lash Talnos. And Spirit Lash Talnos would kill this one too. He would need some kind of play with buffing held on this one while attacking. in order to get that coin now. How much damage do I have? I have 5, 6, 14. 14 plus 4. 14 plus 4 is not quite there yet. That's 18, I'm 3 off. I might be able to get there with the fire elemental next turn. I think we're going all in. Because there's a chance that he needs to spend all of his resources simply to clean up this board and that he is not able to heal up afterwards. Some kind of spirit lash play would obviously give him healing. But let's say he goes for like double coin into Psychic Scream, which is a perfectly rational play. To make in this situation, then he dies to the fire elemental. Got it. Nice. Yeah, I have this fire elemental in my hand, you know. Cool. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button 
and subscribe to my channel for more.